What's up guys, welcome back to Technological Lounge, the channel where I help dummies like you and I get good at an IT. If you're getting into IT and feel super confused and lost, all I've got to say is that makes two of us. Just kidding, you're in the right place, so stick around. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe because I break down all things IT to help you guys break into the IT field or just sharpen your skills overall. So today, you and I are going to be installing Diet Pie on a Raspberry Pi. And if that sounds a little bit confusing, don't worry, because I'm going to take you through each of the steps and get you up and running in no time. So if you're following along from my previous video, you know I just unboxed a Raspberry Pi that I intend on using in my lab to provide my lab with some applications via Docker. However, I need to install an operating system on it first, just like you do with your laptops, your servers, and computers, and that's where Diet Pi comes in. But before we get into all these details about Diet Pi, make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe. When I hit 100 subs, I'm going to be giving away an orange pie to one of my hardcore fans. I know I've got an abundance of them right now, so definitely make sure you hit that sub button. But anyways, back to the video. But you might be wondering why you would even use Diet Pi. You could use anything like Raspbian OS. You could use some sort of version of Linux, or you could even use FreeNAS on your Raspberry Pi. But we're going with Diet Pi because it's very lightweight, consumes very little power, and doesn't use up all your Raspberry Pi's resources, which you can dedicate more towards your applications rather than running the operating system itself. So installing Diet Pi is going to basically consist of five steps, and it's not very much, so don't worry about it. The first step is actually downloading Diet Pi. You can tell right there that's pretty easy. The second step is downloading Rufus. You might not know what Rufus is. Don't worry, we're going to break it down when we get to that step, and that's super easy as well. The third step is actually flashing your SD card and or your flash drive, depending on however you want to install Diet Pi on the SD card. And we're going to go ahead and make it bootable so that we can move into step four, which is actually reinserting that SD card back into your Raspberry Pi and running the actual install of the operating system. And then fifth step is just configuring some basic settings so that you can actually reach it over the network. Sounds pretty simple, right? All right, let's get into step one. So we're going to go ahead and download Rufus and Diet Pi to go ahead and knock out steps one and two right now. And we'll also go ahead and install Rufus. Additionally, we're actually going to have to download one additional piece of software, and that's 7-Zip. And I'll explain why you need that in a second as well. But let's go ahead and download Diet Pi and Rufus first. All right, so you're just going to pull up Google, and you're going to search for Diet Pi, not Diet Poo. You're going to click on dietpi.com, and you're going to go to Download. From here, you got to know what Raspberry Pi model you're using. In this case, I am actually using a Raspberry Pi. And then I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm selecting the option for Raspberry Pi 2 through 4. And then from here, you're going to go ahead and select download. And you see here, it's actually saying that this is a 7-zip file, which also means we're going to need 7-zip is why I told you we'd need it earlier. But let's go ahead and download Diet Pi. And from here, we can go ahead and just search for Rufus in the Google search bar as well. And it's going to be that rufus.ie link. And you're just going to scroll down. And you're going to look for the latest version of Rufus for Windows 64, if that's what you're using. In this case, we are. So we're using that Rufus 4.2. Just click on that and download it. And you just save it wherever. I'm just saving it in the downloads folder. And that's it. Now we'll go ahead and install that 7-zip as well. So we can actually extract the files from the DiapPi software that we downloaded earlier. So we'll go back to that again, the search bar, and we'll just search for 7-zip download. There it is, 7-zip.org. And we'll just go ahead and download the top system right there for the most recent version. Uh, for us, it's 2023 of June 20th, uh, but they could be different for you depending on when you're watching this. And I'll also just save that in my downloads folder. Then I will actually go to that folder Pull that up, downloads, and we'll go ahead and install 7-zip first. You're probably going to get a pop-up from Windows asking you if you really want to install it. Just click yes, and then this should come up your setup. Just click install, leave it default, and it'll tell you 7-zip is installed. You can just close it, and you can verify it by coming up here and seeing that it's usually added to the recent added. If it's not, just go ahead and search for it. Just search 7-zip. Seven, seven there it is. Now we can install Rufus. Just double click that and I've already installed it. So the installer um, didn't pop up. However, it's literally just like two clicks. So just click those two clicks and then you'll end up with this screen here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and right click on that Diet Pi download. 
or we're going to go ahead and click open with. And from here, you go to more apps, look for another app on this PC, and it'll probably bring you up here. You're going to see that 7-zip folder. If you don't under program files, just scroll down. It might be further down. And then from here, click that 7-zip.exe and open. And once we've done that, we'll go ahead and right click on this. And we'll go ahead and click that 7-zip and then we'll click extract files. And this will pop up and we're just going to keep it in the downloads folder and click OK. And now you're probably going to get something like this showing you that it's uh, going through and unpacking everything. And you'll end up with another folder, which is that diet pie, except for it's not a 7-zip anymore. It's a folder with all of your information in it. All right, so we got the Raspberry Pi that we unboxed in my previous video here. It's already all set up and you can see we have the micro SD card already installed. However, we're going to go ahead and actually take it out. We want to go ahead and flash this and set it up as a bootable SD so that we can install Diet Pi onto it. So we're going to go ahead and take it out and just easy enough to pull out. And then we need some sort of adapter for it so that this can actually be inserted into the uh, computer itself. Now, the Canikit uh, Raspberry Pi that I have came with this little adapter. Uh, you just unplug it and then you can actually put the SD card in there. And there's many other options like this too. I've gotten a few over the years where you can actually install a micro SD card and it becomes a USB. Uh, if you don't have anything like this, it's not a big deal. You can actually go ahead and uh, just get a regular USB device as well um, and install Rufus on it. I'm going to actually walk through the process of utilizing Rufus. And then uh, from there, and you just use that as a bootable device to install Diet Pi on here. But for now, uh, in this step, we're going to go ahead and put this in the computer. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to actually... Uh, setting it up as a bootable device so that we can install Diet Pi on it. But now we're going to go ahead and open up Rufus so that we can take this Diet Pi image file and create a bootable SD card or USB card, depending on whatever your situation is. So go ahead and open up Rufus. From here, you're going to want to make sure you select the device that you intend on installing the Diet Pi installer on. I only have one option, and it's because I only have the SD card. And then from here, you're going to click disk or iOS Im ISO image and then click select. You're going to navigate to that Diet Pi folder. And then from here, you're going to click that, that dot IMG file and click open. And then from here, all you got to do is click start. It's going to warn you that everything is going to be deleted, which is good. That's not a big deal for us. And we're going to click OK. It's going to ask you again, are you sure? And we're going to click OK again and let it run. All right, so our bootable device is almost completed at this point. And if you're not really familiar with what we did, we essentially took Rufus, which basically takes USB drives um, or SD cards with adapters, doesn't matter, and it turns them into a bootable device, which is essentially means it installs an operating system on it. In this case, we're using Diet Pi, but you can actually use it for all kinds of things like Windows 10, Linux, whatever it may be. You then apply that same ISO image for whatever that operating system is to Rufus. That'll install it on your USB drive, and you just take that USB drive and plug it into your system, and you can install a whole new operating system on your laptop, your servers, or whatever it is that you want to do. So this doesn't only apply to Diet Pi, but I figured I'd just let you know. Anyways, our, our bootable device is just completed, so we'll go ahead and click. So we'll go ahead and check that out here. And it says it's all done, so we can just close out of this. All right, so now that we created the bootable USB or SD card, whatever your situation is, we're going to go ahead and take that SD card or USB, plug it back into the Raspberry Pi, and turn on the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now that we went ahead and made this a bootable SD, we're just going to go ahead and take it back out. And plug it back into our Raspberry Pi. And we actually need to go ahead and get this thing hooked up. Uh, so you're going to at least need a mouse and keyboard. Now I've got a wireless mouse and keyboard, so I've got two little adapters that I'm going to use here. And then you at least need to hook up your power so that you can turn it on and at least one uh, adapter. Uh, these are going to be mini HDMI ports. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those in now. All right. So I've got my power. It's just USB-C cable. And I've got my mini HDMI cable, which almost looks like a USB cable as well. And that's it. We'll let this thing boot up. We'll go ahead and check our monitor to watch it boot up. And we'll go ahead and go through the install process of Diet Pi. All right. So I just plugged back in the Raspberry Pi and it's booting up. It looks like it's running through that actual install process. Uh, we should be getting some prompts here soon. Five minutes later.
a little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so it looks like the installer has us up out of prompt now with a username and login. So we're going to go ahead and type that in. For me, it's root and diet pi. Uh, it could be different for you. So root and diet pi. All right, so now that you've logged in, it's going to bring you to this prompt. And the first thing we're going to do is get this thing an IP. I'm going to be using specifically Wi-Fi for my option. And that's just because I don't feel like plugging it in right now. However, you can connect a cable to the LAN adapter on this thing as well and allow it to either get an IP via DHCP or set one manually. It's up to you. But for this option, we're just going to go ahead and use Wi-Fi. So we're going to navigate down to network settings. Then you're going to select whatever adapter it is you want to configure. For me, it's Wi-Fi. It's telling me that it's not enabled, so I'm going to go ahead and enable it right now. All right, so it's probably going to try and run through connecting you to a Wi-Fi automatically. Mine did, so I just pressed escape on it and it brought me back here. All you're going to do after it's enabled that Wi-Fi module is go back to Wi-Fi again. And you're going to go ahead and click scan. You can go ahead and just select zero. And we're going to go ahead and do scan again. And now this is actually going to go ahead and look for a Wi-Fi network. Identify yours and click enter. If you have pre-shared key, whatever that password is, go ahead and ensure it's enabled and type your password in and then scroll down and select done. Go ahead and just leave your IP settings to DHCP so that it allows it just to pick up its own IP. Click apply and click okay. Alrighty, so after your Diet Pi finishes uh, doing the Wi-Fi IP negotiation, which is called DHCP, basically it's just trying to get an IP. It should go ahead and display what that IP is. Now mine had some issues and it actually started causing some connection issues. So I just ended up rebooting it and ended up back at the login screen. Uh, which you can see here and you can actually see that the login screen has the ip that's assigned to it now um, if you're seeing some sort of issues when you try to mess with the command line of your diet pie and you just see a random connection status 39 just reboot it that generally will fix it and in this case it did for me as well so i rebooted it and i can see that ip prior to actually trying to connect to that with ssh secure shell um, which is essentially just like an encrypted uh, connection method you can use to reach over the network to this uh, raspberry pi and start interacting with it we'll log back in and see if i'm prompted to configure any additional steps prior to actually being able to reach this thing over the network so let's log back in Alrighty, so in this case, it's asking me what my keyboard is. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select the generic one. Hit OK or hit Enter. Uh, for, key for keyboard layout, I'm just going to stick with English. Obviously, you can use whatever you need to. Stick with the default keyboard layout here as well. No compost key, but you can if you need to. I'm not going to do any of that. And then from here, change global password for DiaPi software installs. Go ahead and press OK. And I'm just going to create a password that you, I'll remember. You do the same. And this isn't actually going to be that password that's used to log in. This is just for uh, the actual installs uh, for future DiPi stuff. And re-enter it. Uh, do you want to change that local login, the actual uh, log in to actually get into the DiPi. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, please enter the new password. So all right, it's going to ask me if I want to disable the serial port connection to this thing. I don't I want to keep it active just in case I need to get back into it. I recommend you do the same. So click enter no. All right, so once you've gone through those initial config setups, which are primarily setting up your password and modifying the keyboard settings, if you decided to, uh, you're going to end up back at this page. And if you're not here anymore, you might have timed out, which means you just need to log back in and you'll end up back here again. Uh, and the final thing we need to do get our, to get our initial configuration completed is uh, navigate down here to install. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And we'll just let that run. And just for your awareness, what this is essentially doing is having the Diet Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi, reach out to the internet and pull down specific updates and packages. Um, nothing too crazy. Uh, receive, pull down specific updates and packages that it needs to function. 
any potential patches and stuff like that as well. It may take a few minutes depending on how many updates it does need, but don't worry, just stick around and, and it should go through pretty fast. So now this is asking you if you want to uh, essentially participate in some of their uh, diagnostics being sent. I don't ever do anything like that, so I'm going to opt out. You can do what you want, but I recommend you opt out as well. And then just enter. And that's it. You should be completely configured at this point. And you can see here in the top left that we actually do have the IP address of the wireless NIC for the Diet Pi. So we can actually try and SSH to that secure shell to it, which means we're going to try to reach over the network via an encrypted connection method to try and actually log into this thing. So let's go ahead and do that now. Alrighty, so we're going to need some sort of terminal software to SSH over the, to this Diet Pi. Fortunately, Windows comes with PowerShell, which is a terminal software pre-installed with every version of Windows. So we're just gonna go ahead and use that. However, you can use your favorite terminal software like Putty if you do have that. But in this example, we're just gonna go ahead and use PowerShell. Alrighty, so we're gonna open up our Windows button. And we're gonna search for PowerShell. Hit enter. And the command you're gonna to wanna to run is SSH. And you're gonna enter that username that you modified the password for earlier. If you created your own user account, uh, you'll enter that as well. So root in our case, and then the at sign, and then the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And just hit enter. And now if this is your first time connecting to the Diet Pi, you might get some sort of warning asking if you want to accept the SSH fingerprint. You can just type yes and hit enter on that. And then from here, you'll just enter your password. And you're in. And that's it. And uh, one thing you might have noticed is I switched clothes. And that's because I actually ended up having issues when I was working on this last night. I kept SSHing over to it and it was telling me that I had an incorrect password. I ended up doing some research and found out there's some specific special characters that Diet Pi will allow you to set the password for. And you'll be able to log into the console via that password. However, when you go to SSH, it gives you an error saying it's an incorrect password. So if you're running into this issue, go ahead and just set the password to something basic like 1234 and then try and SSH in again and see if that works. And if that is the case, whatever password you were using has a special character that's just messing with it. So you might have to mess around with that a little bit, but that's just something I ran into uh, and I was banging my head against the desk for about two hours. So hopefully you can avoid that since you watch this. But that's it. We went ahead and installed Diet Pi on a Raspberry Pi. We created a bootable SD card or flash drive if you did that. And we went ahead and did the basic configuration, set up an IP on it, and actually was able to SSH to it over the network. Now, if you had any questions or any issues as you were going through this, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Let me know uh, what happened, and I'll try and help you out. But anyways, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate your guys' support. Make sure you stick around because the next video is going to be me actually installing Docker on top of this Raspberry Pi OS so that we can start throwing some applications in there uh, to support my lab. Also, make sure you comment down below and definitely like this video and subscribe because I'm going to be giving a giveaway once I hit those 100 subscribers for an orange pie so that you can throw it in your lab if you end up being a winner. I appreciate you guys. You take it easy and have a good one. Peace.